Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman, and welcome to my Trump cartoon countdown for March 4th, 2020, AT. AT meaning after the Trump acquittal. AT, we have AT and a, uh, after the Trump acquittal, AT. Okay, and every week, every, uh, kind of every week, we do the countdown based upon the number of impressions on, on Twitter, uh, and then I, I kind of categorize them into, into the order of the most, the greatest response, and I present them to you with a little bit of uh, explanations and trying not to put myself into it, and get you have, give you some humor, and you, and you do the, the uh, decision making on your own. You do the thinking it out, and I just give you the humor and the facts. So let's have a go at it. Here we have uh, this week, uh, we had here uh, one, two, three, four cartoons. So we're doing the top four, starting off with number four in the countdown. Okay, at first, here are the characters. These were, this was the, uh, the Democratic candidates before a couple of them uh, withdrew. Three, three of them have withdrawn, okay. This was Tom here. And this is Joe, Bernie, and Elizabeth Warren, Elizabeth here, and here's Mayor Pete, here's Bloomberg, okay, and here is um, Amy Klobuchar, and here was um, Tom, I forgot his name, well, Tom, so whatever, he put a lot of money into it, into it so did Bloomberg, and I guess they did the, the best they could do. So anyway, here is this cartoon I did to introduce you to the characters that I always do first. And here's President Trump. And let's have a go at it, okay? The Trump cor coronavirus press conference when the president blamed the stock market plummet on the Democratic debate, saying the, de the candidates upset financial markets. So in essence, President Trump was saying that it was the candidates getting so depressed at the people who are running, the Democrats are running for the highest office in the land, that everybody kind of got soured on the stock market, and that, cre and that created this, this uh, what we want to call it, a bear market, a dramatic dream bear market, where everybody said, let's, get, let's sell our stocks now, because there ain't no future here with these Democratic candidates. And that was uh, President Trump's hypothesis at the time when he said that. And here was President Trump saying that, and he says, they say we have to have a president like this, and there's always a possibility. So they said, F dot dot my 401k and my kid's college. I'm selling my stocks if these fools are going to replace Donald J. Trump. And that was February 28th. There, there they are. There were the candidates. Okay. There were the candidates. As I said, three of them have already dropped out. Okay. Elizabeth Warren is going to hang in there. <laughs> we know that. And so she's going to go down with, uh, she's going to stick to her, her uh, thing, whatever. And so here we go. That was it. Just to give you, there you go. Okay. Now, here comes the next one. Okay. Now, here we have President Trump at, a, at his rally. Whoop, there we go. In, is it President Trump at his rally? This is uh, in uh, South Carolina, Charleston. And here he is doing his thing, saying his, his piece. And here we go. I get a look at everybody here, people rallying. There's President Trump with his with his micro on the microphone, and here we go. Okay. Trump, during South Carolina rally, just hours before news of the first U.S. death broke, calls Democrats' efforts to bring light to the president's systematic dismantling of America's pandemic response capability since taking office their new hoax. So the president is basically saying that the Democrats are, pl are using this as a hoax to manufacture another hoax like they did with his uh, with his, his call to the Ukrainian president, uh, we won't go into that, 
but this is another hoax. This is like round two hoax, hoax the second or round two of another hoax. So they're using this not to say that the, the, the coronavirus is a hoax, but to say that the Democrats are manufacturing uh, 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 facts that are designed to, to bring down the president and to make him look bad for in, in the next election. So they're saying, the president is basically saying that the Democrats are hoping for the, to get the best out of this kind of coronavirus, you know, like squeezing a, a grapefruit or an orange, they're, ho they're squeezing the coronavirus to get the last drop of juice they can get out of the virus to make, it, make President Trump look bad. So that's basically, that's basically what President Trump is saying they're doing. You see, the coronavirus is real, but the, Gem the Democrats are trying to squeeze that virus to get the, as much as they can on the president, you know? So anyway, so here's, here's they are, here's, here's President Trump at the rally, and here's President Trump saying what he um, might have said, okay? Or might have thought. I, was, I, was, I, I directed this because we already know what he said. I was thinking about what he was thinking at the time he was, before he was saying it or, or at the time in, in, in his trend of thought. Okay, so here we go. As a great president who cares deeply about our fun, fantastic country, I do not want this newest Democrat hoax about our administration's preparations for the coronavirus to be weaponized against the American people. So he's trying to say, that basically the Democrats again are weaponizing this to use against him. You know, go, we gotta get that coronavirus down President Trump's throat. You know, <laughs> that's basically what the president is saying in, in his thoughts and, and what he projected and what he really did say. It kind of, you know, okay, VP Pence will be in charge of developing the push for the United States to have the greatest test kits and personal protective gear in the world. Well, the fact of the matter is there was a shortage of, of uh, test kits that worked. A lot of them didn't work. And then a lot of people went in there with, uh, without personal protective gear uh, to meet these people coming back from overseas. And I'm sure if there was protective gear available, they would have been given it to them, but probably there wasn't any around and they couldn't find any and they had to, somebody had to meet them. So they sacrificed, uh, I guess, a few people went, went there, you know, without their raincoats, you know, so, um, or maybe with their raincoats instead of, instead of protective gear. So that's the story. That's the facts that, that, that is, is true. And a lot of the, t the uh, test kits did not work, and there were cuts to the budget, a lot of dr uh, drastic cuts to the, uh, to the CDC in preparation for uh, events like this were made systematically the dismantling of America's pandemic response capability. This, this was done. A lot of money was taken out of those programs to, uh, to help to, to enable America to defend against pandemics like this, like this kind. So we had them before and it was only a logical, a logical conclusion it was going to happen again. You know, that we've had all kinds of things in, over the last few years. So this was only a, a matter of time before something else emerged, and it has. So basically, that's the story here. And there's President Trump at the rally with his microphone and his supporters behind him, rooting him on. Okay, so that, that, that's that one. Now here we have, um, here, let's, let's get, uh, here we have Lindsey Graham meeting with President Trump in the Oval Office, okay? Now, and also he have here Mitch McConnell in a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, I can't leave out uh, sing-along Mitch. I call him sing-along Mitch. Anyway, here we go. Trump, possible meeting with Senator Lindsey Graham after the President said he intends to nominate Representative John Ratcliffe as his Director of National Intelligence reviving a selection that founded last year over concerns about qualifications and fears as a Trump loyalist, he would politicize the nation's spy apparatus. In other words, the fact is that uh, Representative John uh, Radcliffe did not have the necessary qualifications you would want in a, uh, the head of the, of the national intelligence, the director of national intelligence. He didn't have, 
he didn't have the, the training or anything like that. It's just like you put somebody in a control in a controller where the planes are coming in and landing and you have all kinds of things going around here and you put somebody in there who who who's, who manufactures kites or something like that. And you say, okay, <laughs> you know, it's it, it's that type of thing that the, not that the, to denigrate him, but he didn't have the, the experience or the background to do the job, and that was the concern. And the concern also was that President Trump was picking him on the basis of the fact of his loyalty and not on his capability as far as protecting the, the country from all kinds of threats, because that's, that was created after 9-11, that office, to, to coordinate all the agencies that we don't duplicate different things and that we prioritize the threats that are real and, 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 and it's a complicated, it's a complicated uh, situation there when you have all kinds of uh, people, you know, saying, whoa, 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 whoa. and then you have this guy, whoa, whoa, who, who, do we, who knows what's going to happen? So we have to, we have to prioritize, and we need somebody there who knows what, has the experience and knows what they're doing. So, so um, I mean, you, you can't play blind man's bluff in, 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 in this kind of situation, you know? So anyway. That's uh, that's what that's what so 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 uh, President Trump here is meeting with Lindsey Graham in his office to make sure he gets the support for Representative John Ratcliffe to take over the helm of this National Intelligence Agency, a na Director of National Intelligence, okay, which coordinates again is at the helm of all the intelligence agencies and co and really puts it all together. Okay, so here's President Trump with Lindsey Graham, and here's now. And here he's saying, Lindsey, last year you were one Republican. This was a nomination that had been withdrawn in the past, you see? And the only one who really supported it was Senator Lindsey Graham, one of the few people, the, I think the only person, from what I uh, was able to read from the sources, was the only person who really was gung-ho for, for this uh, Representative John Radcliffe to take that position. But the Republicans rallied uh, uh, against this idea, and, it was, and, uh, and he withdrew uh, on his own, uh, so uh, so I guess uh, President Trump now feels more confident in, in being, uh, you know, with his acquittal behind him, and going forward, he feels more confident in bringing it up again. So he's going to Lindsey Graham now because Lindsey Graham was the number one man who wanted it, and who was supporting that during the first trial. So here we go. Here's President Trump in the Oval Office with Lindsey Graham trying to get Lindsey on board again to really push uh, Mitch McConnell, the leader. He, nothing gets done there without Mitch McConnell. No, we, he's like the, the engine, the, 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 uh, the engine really, really that runs the, the, that whole apparatus in the, in the Republican uh, effort here, especially in the Senate, which needs to confirm anybody. But I think it's a two-thirds majority. So here we go. Lindsey, last year you were the you were the one Republican who really supported our friend John, meaning John Ratcliffe. Now that all the hoax impeachment shit is over, I'm counting this time on Leader Mitch to open his mouth. Leader Mitch was pretty quiet last time. He didn't say nothing, you see? So, and, and kick ass for John's confirmation. And then we have here, we have, we have uh, Lindsey Graham. Okay, and, and Lindsey Graham saying, Mr. President, remember, Mitch saw to it that you won that impeachment hoax, but now he is up against a strong Democratic challenger who could put him in, his, in this, Mitch is from Kentucky, he's a senator from Kentucky, in, 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 in this Kentucky bucket of chicken over, his, over this second Radcliffe nomination. In other words, you hear now uh, Senator, senator Mitch, McConnell, Mitch, Mitch McConnell is facing basically a lady who was a, a, a combat flight. Uh, she flew. She flew planes for the United States. She was a. She was in the. I think in the Air Force. And she's a very capable lady, from what I've seen. So she, he's really not up against uh, somebody who who's like a. I don't know what you want to say, but you know, a strong. She's the strongest candidate he's ever had had to face. Have had has had to to face in in this in this contest. So Mitch McConnell's been there a long time. So anyway. So this nomination going could, could she could use this against him, and it could be you know curtains for, for Senator McConnell. So he has to take that in, into consideration. And here's what here is, uh, you know, it's 
put, he could be end up in, in a chicken, in a bucket of chicken here, a Kentucky fried chicken, fried like the chicken in this bucket, if he, if, if he, if he doesn't do the right thing. So President Trump answers him back saying, speaking of chicken, tell Mitch if he doesn't support John, I will name him Chicken Mitch McNugget. So in other words, he's gonna go one step beyond and call him Chicken Mitch McNugget. Mitch McConnell, Mitch McNugget. So I just thought that was a little humorous and it's a little to tail. Nevertheless, it could, it could have easily uh, occurred, this type of conversation, when you consider the ramifications of, uh, of how important this is to President Trump and the, the fact that Lindsey Graham was the only senator to have supported in the past and Mitch McConnell last time was doing the first trial, kept his mouth shut, he didn't say nothing good or bad, he just was quiet. So, so it could, it could, this could conceivably be the dynamics of what happened, possibly, but I ain't saying I heard it or I read it, but this is just my uh, fabrication based upon the, the facts that I gathered. And to, to inform you and give you a little smile. Now here is the last one here. That really got a pretty good response also. And this is, yeah, here we have Mick Mulvaney in the Oval Office. Here's the portrait of George Washington on top of the mantle of the fireplace. And here is President Trump. Now, here we go. Mm -hmm. Trump meets with his acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, mm -hmm. following a federal appeals court ruling that former White House counsel Don McGahn does not have to comply with a subpoena seeking his testimony to the House Judiciary Committee. In other words, uh, McCann was President Trump's attorney, and he does not have to, and he was involved in a lot of things that went on, that, that uh, the president alleged, alle uh, alleged wrongdoing. I mean, it, it was uh, that he crossed the line with his talks with the, with the president of Ukraine, trying to get the investigation onto Joe Biden, and he crossed the line that he looked out more for himself than he did for the country. That was the, 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 the uh, crossing of the Rubicon, let's just say, that they, they, the Democrats had alleged that the president did. And so what, what happened here is that the courts, the Court of Appeals said basically that we don't have the authority to rule on this. So we're not gonna side with anybody. We just say we don't have the authority. So if the courts don't have the authority, then who has the authority? The president has the authority to say he doesn't want anybody who's, a, who's associated with this, who's affiliated or in his administration to testify, so he has the right. So that goes down the line to any other president coming along can say the same thing. So you, you got here the separation of powers, moving in the other, moving from like the, power, the separation of powers, which, which create, which, which cements our, our democracy being shaken a little bit because now the president can say anything to anybody and he, 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 that, that person, if the president says, I don't want you to testify that I said that, which I never did say, which, which he did, probably may have said it, then it, it's, it's just down the tubes, it's just down the drain. So it sets a precedent here for the future uh, presidents. We may have somebody in the future who may look Don, like D Donald Trump, look like the, the Merry Mailman, you know? When I was a kid, the Merry Mailman used to come around, we used to watch that uh, TV uh, thing in the morning look like uh, the Merry Mailman, you know? We may have somebody like that who, who look, makes, we say, well, Donald, good old days of Donald Trump, you know? <laughs> we, it could happen. So who knows what, 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 can, what, what time can bring here, you know? So President Trump might look good down the road with, with, with the president, with these presidents in place now. Someday we could get somebody and we say, oh, well, we'll go back to the good old days of, of President Trump, you know? So anyway, so just like we did, some people do that with President Bush now, and he went into Iraq. Oh, well, at least, at least President Bush, he, he, was a, he was a good man, this and that and that. Well, they're gonna say, it's just, it's just a progress, it could happen. So anyway, I just want you to think, make you think, and, and get a perspective here. Not trying to inject my uh, opinions, because that, that goes against my, uh, my cart the cartoonist inside of me to do that. I'm just trying to give you some humor and make you think, and, and that's about the story here. So here, here we go with this cartoon. So let's have a go at it. Mick, 
Now I will be remembered more than George Washington here. I increased the power of the presidency, while Washington limited its power by refusing to be president for life. So uh, President Washington, the first president, George Washington, he said he didn't want the job for more than two terms because we should not be, uh, we, we, we fought a war here, a revolutionary war against the British, not to have their system of government where we have somebody in power who stays forever and ever. So, uh, so that was George Washington's thing. So then, so then he says, well, Washington, well, so, so President Trump here says, Mick, now I will be remembered more than George Washington here. I increased the power of the presidency while Washington limited its power by refusing to be president for life. So here's Mick Mulvaney here who, who throws a suggestion at the president. Mick Mulvaney in the Oval Office, acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney says, that's it, Mr. President. After your reelection over either crazy Bernie or sleepy Joe, you can pressure lawmakers to declare Donald J. Trump as the first American president elected for life. Again, this is this is all, this is a, this is far fetched. But who knows? In this world, we never we, we think a lot of things are far fetched and they come to fruition. So I was just here, just making a trying to make you think and give you a, a point here. So then, so then President Trump he retorts back. The President, President Trump reports back saying, we better make it for eternal life in case I come back as a ghost. So he don't want to take no chances that he may come back as a ghost and, and walk around and have to fly around town not being president, you know? So that's it, folks. That's the, that's the countdown for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a good laugh. And I hope you're thinking about stuff that's going on. And. Uh, that's about it. I just want to say one more thing, introduce you to my three books here. This is the first book that I wrote, The Greatest Book of Political Cartoons on the Trump Presidency with a flashback to Democrat-Republican candidates of 2016. Okay, so this goes up to 2018 and it takes you through the first election of President Trump and shows you all cartoons, Bernie Sanders and, and Hillary Clinton, and it goes through the first, uh, the first year first couple of years of the Trump administration. And then, the, and then from 2019, I broke it. There's so many things going on that I broke it up into two books. And then this was, this was edition one, January through June. Again, you can see here all kinds of things. The windmill, situ of the windmill, Mick Mulvaney there. And then all kinds of stuff here. Some few, yeah, what I said here, some future presidents of the United States. This is one I did when he was talking about future presidents of the United States. These are future. This was a cartoon I did about about future presidents of the United States losing power. So, so he was thinking in his mind about some future presidents could be. Anyway, <laughs> coming back to that. All right, and this is the current book, uh, from the edition two, July through December. Okay, so yeah, three. Three series in a book, a series of three books, the greatest 2019 book of political cartoons on the Donald J. Trump, on issues of the Donald J. Trump presidency, edition two, July through December. And uh, I, if you want to just look at some of the car sample cartoons and just hang out there on my website, you can go to Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. And that's no spaces and no apostrophe S, because you go to apostrophe S and you put spaces, you're going to go to a completely different place. So it's Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. No spaces and no apostrophe S on the Richards. It's just Richards. R I C H A R D S, no apostrophe S, no spaces. Richard's Books of Political, Political Cartoons.com. And if you want to read my current cartoons, all you got to do is just hit go on to Twitter, and it's Bronx Cartoonist at RJF Cartoons. And I, I want to thank you folks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you again and for the next countdown. And you take care and, uh, and just think optimistic and take care of yourselves, folks. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.